Pat Vegas, which I feel like I need to sing. We are so honored. I just want you to know that we are so honored to have you here today. Um, if I, he did offer to play his guitar, so maybe we'll have to force you later. <laughs> um, but I know most of you know him from being the, um, the vocalist and lyricist and producer of Redbone, who um, had the, the hit single, Come and Get Your Love, Witch Queen of New Orleans, and we were all wounded at Wounded Knee. Um, he was featured in the New York Smithsonian, along with his bandmates, for being the first Native American group to have a number one single. Um, and Frankie Vegas is an author, founder of Who's Frankie and Made Media Marketing, daughter of Pat Vegas and writer of the forward of Redbone, true story of a Native American rock band. This graphic novel is told through the depictions of Frankie's conversations with her father, and she feels passionately about sharing her father's legacy with the world. And so do we, Frankie. And, and honestly, I'm so excited to have you guys both here today. And um, why don't you just give us a brief introduction and then we'll start with some questions. Yeah, we're so very excited. We're here in Los Angeles right now, obviously dealing with uh, the pandemic and staying healthy and safe, but we're so excited to be able to be here and share this book with the world. And I know it means a lot to my dad, it's his story and, you know, he lived it and to be able to have um, Christian, who is the writer of the book, Christian and Sonia Paloni, uh, to depict his story in such a great graphic novel. We're just very excited about we it. We spent a lot of time together, me and Christian, so we went over the uh, story back and forth over and over and over. So we got the real truth in there, you know, and it's a fun book, you know, because it's got so many things that we went through, you know, little escapades, little uh, things that we went through with bands and, and with the audience and stuff. And, and we had some great shows, and, uh, and the book really talks about the things that we really went through. It's real, real funny. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, we enjoy it, and we're excited about it. I will, I will point out um, if you, you guys might not know this, but that E symbol, the librarians on the call know that it means the E galley is available, which means that they can view it online. And I will say that it is, it is beautiful, and it is really fun the way that this is, um, that this was created, the way the art looks, the way the pages are all spread out. You really yeah. feel like you are there for the creation of or for like the for the whole movement of the rock band and all the songs it, it feels so fun to, to um to even look through the pages so um, we're so excited about it um i was telling i was telling pat and frankie before that last night i was doing a little research so i was watching the um the 1974 midnight special of when redbone was on and i was singing come and get your love for the rest of the night so it's so fun to see it um we were talking about how, you know, back then there wasn't all this social media, there wasn't YouTube. Um, so to now be able to go back in time and hear your story so in such a great way, in such a personal way, uh, and in such a graphic way is is so such an honor. So um, let me you. ask you a couple. What? How, how long ago did the um, when did the idea for this book start, and how long did it take to get to? Uh, it took us about uh, two days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we wish everything took that that amount of time, right? I mean, I feel like the story was already there, but yeah. development took probably about like a year yeah. or so, just kind of get it going through meetings and stories that we had to tell yeah. to Christian. And, it was very personal, so you know we had to dig it out of me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it? Did you find that it was hard, or was it was it um, hard, or was it um, like? comforting to talk about a lot of the past and like people that you've lost and all that stuff so that in the beginning it was that kind of difficult but, but i got over it you know and then uh, i cried for about two days and then I, <laughs> yeah and it was you know and it was a good story it was fun you know i mean the book talks about a lot of personal things that that, that i normally wouldn't talk about you know but in the book i do and uh, and it makes it interesting and uh, uh, I dug deep for it, you know, so it's it's really fun. The fun yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure it was cathartic. I'm sure there was a lot of things that you probably hadn't thought about in a really long time. So, but for right. people that are reading it to know this for the first time, it's it's important to have your your specific memories of the situation. So, um, we're we're so happy you did it. Is there anything? Is there any particular part of the book that you were the most proud of, or that was the hardest for you to put in, or anything like that? 
No, I was, I'm proud of the entire book. The entire book tells a complete story of what it was like, you know, at that time. And, uh, you know, we, we, we went over some obstacles and went through things that, uh, you know, normal rock bands don't go through, you know, like like being followed by the FBI everywhere we went, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, but, but we went, we, we, we got past it. Yeah. You know, and we, the people loved the music and we gave them everything we had, you know. It's pretty powerful, you know, the, the story in general, you know, from just a little, like you said, the nuances of, you know, uh, meeting the queen and, and playing at Royal Albert Hall and, yeah. and Jimi Hendrix inspiring them to, to follow their heritage and, and you know, create a Native American rock band. And he wanted to join a group. <laughs> yeah. He, he called Warner Brothers and says he's quitting uh, the Henry's experience. He's going to join Redbone. And they told him, if you do, they'll never record again. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. Wow. He, but he wanted this to. Is the kind. This is the kind of stuff people need to know. I love this. Um, yeah. Now, Frankie, did you know? Were there a lot of things that you didn't know? Like, did you know that your dad had won that singing contest when he was so young and? Like, did you know all this stuff already, or were you learning stuff at the same time? You know, it's a little bit of both, because I feel like I grew up hearing a lot of these stories from him. Um, I was always so fascinated by what he did, but sometimes, as a young girl, you forget, like, oh, my dad did all these incredible things, because it's your father, you know? So you're used to seeing them all the time, and every day, and then and then I would hear these stories, and, and I'd go to shows with him when I was younger, and I would see the reaction and I'd be like, I'd be amazed to see how many people really looked up to him and, and what movements he actually started and just seeing um, so much about the Native American civil rights movement, um, AIM, you know, American Indian movement, and also seeing things about the other band members is what I learned as well. Yeah. Because I learned a lot about my dad and my uncle's stories just from growing up, but to actually <laughs> know and read about Tony Bellamy and Pete DePoe and, and Butch and all these, you know, other legendary members of Red of Redbone. It was yeah. it was incredible to see and how had, they grew up as well. We had so many people uh, wanting to record with us, to come in the studio and, and record with us because we had a certain sound in the group. The band had a sound, yeah. And we had an identity that no one had ever seen before, you know. When we first, first walked out on stage, people would the audience would step back about three feet, you know, and <laughs> would come on. They'll like brace themselves. Like, what bells, are we going? Are we going? <laughs> shakers and and all kind of and chants and everything. People were freaked out at first, but once we got rolling, they charged the stage. You know, it was, it was yeah. Big. Europe was a, was a trip too. The European audience was just loved us, you know, and. Uh, and uh, the Queen of England loved this. <laughs> oh, that's so that's so amazing. I'm so happy that this book is um, was done. It's such a it's so important. Also, I love um, the the music bio epics. I love knowing you know you you hear a song on the radio so many times and you're like you just take it for granted, you know. Um, and then to hear like all the work put into just that one you know into just that one song, it, it's 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 humbling. It's um. It's 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 an honor for us to get to know more about the story. Do you want to talk a little bit about your involvement with um, the Native American Civil Rights Movement and how that what your involvement is there? Yes, uh, we were performing at the uh, uh, during the trials in Minnesota, uh, the you know the Wounded Knee trials and all that. We were we were there and we uh, played from we had. We we got picked up in a limo one night and, and, and driven to this one location and we, but and in the limo with us was uh, was uh, Marlon Brando, uh, Russell Means, uh, all the guys that that were involved in this trial, and we all sat around drinking beers and talking about uh, what what the develop things were, de were developing it and then what was coming of it and uh, Brando was powerful for us you know like he refused to take the Oscar that year. And we talked about that, and I, and I thanked him for that, and, and uh, it was just incredible, you know. It was just a wonderful uh, uh, trip to go through that, you know. And the people were 100%. Now Native Americans are coming out and talking and making their noise, making their presence known, where, where at one time they, they were silent and quiet majority, you know. 
And uh, I wanted them to come out and talk and, and, and stand up for the rights and stuff. And that's what we were fighting for. Yeah, and another thing is their song Wounded Me was actually banned from release in the U.S. Yeah. because of the controversial, you know, uh, subject matter. Mm-hmm. And they took that record um, you know, against the U.S.'s wishes and they brought it to, the, to Europe and it went to number one in the Netherlands. And, and, and it went number one throughout Europe. Yeah, throughout Europe. And yeah. it shows that, you know, true music that stands for something and, and stands for a movement of a people is going to get the word out regardless. And people yeah. are going to love it because not only is it is it speaking something, you know, into fruition, something powerful, but it's also the truth. a great melody at the yeah. same time, yeah. you know, yeah. so it, it works. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so... Um, it's such a that's why it's like such an honor and privilege to talk to you and for you to be such an important figure in this you know in the in the movement and to give um, a voice where there wasn't one and to give people the courage to come out yes, yes. Um, when you started doing music was that your goal or did was your goal to just do music did yes. you have like and at the beginning my, I was a sideman a musician and that did a lot of recording sessions for I'm on a I'm on a hundred different hit records that I played bass on. And that's what we did in the beginning because we we wanted to just fit in, you know. And uh, and uh, I I toured I played as a group called I, I traveled and played as a group called the the uh, Avantis. the Avantis and then I with the Beach Boys and I tra- traveled as as a, the group that made this. Let's go, you know that. Uh, oh. Did wow. that. <laughs> Now, so the Marquettes, uh, no matter what shape your stomach's in, all the, I, play, I, play, I played with everybody at one time. But so, uh, and, I, and I played with the Champs, you know, Tequila. Oh, they, yeah. And I played with them. And, and then finally, I, after a while, I, I realized, you know, I have to do something more. And I have to do something for my people, you know, and for, for, for things. Because nothing was being done. Everything was silent, you know. And, I, and the silence was driving me crazy. So uh, we we, I, we formed a, we stopped doing everything and went up into the Hollywood Hills, into a house, went at a big story. house, and we started playing <laughs> just our original music, you know, and that's what you you heard all the albums, and 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 we just called ourselves Redbone, you know, which means uh, part Indian, part Native American, you know, half breed, you know, any part you could have a quarter, like a Redbone is a where there's a lot of red bones in the world because, you know, and the intermarriage and all kind of stuff like that. So right now the U.S. government doesn't want to acknowledge uh, anyone that's not 100% Native American, which is wrong. You know, because, I mean, uh, you should be honored, you should be ex- accepted, even if you have a quarter in, in, in your Native American blood. So uh, so that's wrong, and, and that's why red bone is a new tribe People that <laughs> won't be accepted by the government, <laughs> and, you know, so we our own crowd, you know. And he's still doing stuff now for the movement. You know, we, um, the Vegas family is starting a foundation actually, or the chance to have it all foundation where we will be single handedly accepting uh donations on behalf of people who would like to give to Native American tribes, and we'll be giving them directly to yeah. the foundation that we uh that are actually on the front lines doing things for the yes, community. Yes. So we're excited about that as well. <clears throat> that is, that's wonderful that you're still going strong. Um, I think that we might, um, when we get to meet again in person, uh, we might we might really have to come. We might have to hear you play at something for us. I think it would be so fun. Yeah. Um, I, it would be amazing. Um, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, who else is in the band with you, since you're the one. That has the honor of writing the story. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about who else is in the band with you? Uh, well, there was my brother Lolly, Lolly Vegas, the lead guitarist. Uh, he and I grew up together. We used to hide under the blankets <laughs> and practice together, bass and guitar. And um, uh, so then you have Tony Bellamy, who's from Orange County, who's a who's a flamenco dancer at one time with his band, with his family. He danced from Inco and stuff, and he had this rhythm, incredible rhythm that he played on guitar, which made the some of the red, which made the red bone sound. With with Lolly was playing, and I was playing, and Tony on rhythm guitar. Yeah. Then we found Pete DePoe, 
who was the drummer, the first drummer who was playing with Bobby Womack at the time. And Bobby Womack was a friend of the band's, and he came over one day and said to me, <laughs> he said, Pat, I've got a drummer that would fit in perfect with you guys. And we had a black drummer by the name of uh, Jim Gordon DeWitty, who uh, was an incredible drummer. And he had Indian blood in him, too. So, so anyway, so she said, I think this drum will fit perfect with you. Well, and so I said, well, let's trade drummers. And we traded, and we got Pete DePaul. And uh, and he fit like a glove. It was perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, and uh, that's how Red Bone got started. Meant to be. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And you're still playing. Well, let's pretend the world isn't the way it is, but you're still playing now, right? Yes, I'm still playing, yeah. Yeah. I practice every day and uh, and uh, keep my chops up, you know, and uh, uh, and just uh, writing yeah. writing new music. Mm-hmm. You know, Frankie and I wrote some stuff together, and and we just keep on writing and just keep. Uh, I got my songs, are, my catalog is building and building, you know. Oh, I love it. I think that's so fun. Um, plus, I think that being a creative person um, probably has made the quarantining um, a little easier in some ways. I mean. Yes, you can't perform for people, but it probably does give you time to create more and to reflect. And I think, it's, yeah. you know, I think it's good for for a creative person. It must have some merit to it. I'm using this time, this downtime, you know, where everybody has to stay home. You know, so I'm using it to write and, and, and put more music together. Uh, one of my songs says that uh, sometimes I feel surrounded by a thousand people shouting. I close my eyes and wish they disappear. Then I turn and look around me in a place and space I find me, foreign and I fear that there's no one left to turn to. And like a soft kiss breeze that warms the summer's evening, I feel something free caressing me inside. It's the knowledge that there's someone who still needs me. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting. Oh. <laughs> I just cheered up a little bit. Oh, I have. Oh. <laughs> That's beautiful. I have to say, we've, we've been doing these book buzzes once a week. Um, I told you guys you guys that before, since the quarantine started. And honestly, more than ever, we've realized as um, publishing people, as librarians, as authors, that books really are, books, art, music, they really do get you through a lot of the, um, a lot of the hard times in life. And I think that your book is a perfect example of that, where you come out stronger for it. Yes. You're, you're telling your story. Do you find that, um, did you think there was a, a strength in having it told in graphic novel form that maybe would have been lost in prose? Yes, because I, I, Kia, for years we, we put up with the, the thought that we had a number one song, but nobody knew who it was because uh, they never saw it until, until it, 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 this book gives us a chance to reach the people and reach those that really want to know about Redbone, you know. And, yeah. and it, I think it's going to be interesting reading for a lot of people going to love it. Yeah. yeah. And the pictures are so incredibly done. You know, the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. seeing everything done so lifelike, um, but still keeping that very, like, cartoon comic essence is so beautiful. And for them to really put a face to the music and to the name yeah. and to, you know, maybe reach a different generation, like a younger generation to where they can have fun with it and they yeah. can see like, wow, these are people that made great music that I listen to nowadays as well. And also, you know, this is something that can possibly go on for generations. The moment in time that they that. can get really to, to know about Redbone and, and feel us and how we felt at the time. So it's, it's, it's an important book. It's an important thing. It is. It is. I think you're right. And I think when, when kids um, and students or, you know, whoever learn about, um, you know, Native American um, stories or people, and yeah. they just hear about it in a bigger picture, it doesn't work, right? You look through just a couple pages of this book and it just, it like almost like means more than like a whole year of learning about, you know, Native American history, just because you're just, it's so important the way it's told and it, it, it's really done so well. Um, and it's funny because when I was watching some of your um, older videos yesterday, um, first of all, I have to tell you, I was in such a bad mood when I was watch when I was I had such a long day, and I put on the music and I was immediately like in just such a good mood. And also like Yay. The, uh, the the fact that work can get busy and the fact that like programs can be hard to put together means nothing with 
when you compare it to the fact that we get to talk to you guys today and um, it just was like humbling and it was funny because when I was listening to the music, I thought this is making me so happy. I think the graphic novel was like the perfect way to go because it's such a colorful story that yeah. it actually really made sense. So you get to you get to, you get to hear things that normally nobody would know, you know. But it's real personal, real, you know. Yeah. Sharing. And we're so happy that it's going to be, you know, shared with the world. And like you said, the music, it, it, it made you happy. And that's the whole point of everything is yeah. to inspire people and make them happy and, and bring joy to their world. You know, we see little babies, the infant babies dancing to come and get your love. And, <laughs> and it's, so, it's so amazing. And we crack up because it's like, wow, they think they, they can't even speak and they feel it in their bones. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's they great. Feel it, they feel the beauty and sincerity. Uh, that was going on at the time, you know, and it still is. Still is. Uh, yeah. All music has that, you know. It's a certain uh, spiritual uh, entity that's in there, you know. Yeah. yeah. You know. And I, I really, um, I'm just so glad that we that we're able to work on this book. We're so happy to hear your story. Um, Frankie, do you want to add anything about like what, um, you know, what's going to happen with it as far as like because you can't tour right now, but how? You know, if you guys are going to be doing any events online, how we can learn about them or anything like that? Yeah, we're currently in the works right now with IDW um, to create uh, a couple of different events to kind of get the word out there for the book. The release is set for September, so an official release, but I know the pre-order is available now. Um, so we're very, very excited about that. We're super excited to be here with you and Penguin Random House and, kind of, like you said, like get, get the word out um, to people. Uh, but as far as events coming, it's all a little hush-hush right now, but we're in the works for something. So as soon as we find something uh, that will be happening, we'll be more than happy to share it and get the word out. Yeah. Um, but as of right now, he's still writing, working on an album. Yeah. So these are all great things. Um, I'm writing as well, working on a children's book series. I'm also working with my son, PJ Vegas, who's an yeah. artist also. Yeah, he's a great music artist as well. They're yeah. working on some things together. Yeah. Um, but as far as the book goes, uh, we're just, you know, we're excited to get it out there and we're putting together some events. Up, uh, do, you, do, you, um, do you think it's appropriate for the YA audience? Is, there, is the content avail appropriate for the younger, the young adult audience or is it? Oh, it is. It is, it is. I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, I believe it is. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything too drastic in there that no, that no. could, you know, no, it doesn't go off into, you yeah. know, shell shock them. But no, no. It, you know, it's safe reading. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I remembered anything that was that was in a, like you know not going to work for a young adult audience. I just couldn't remember. All right. Yes. I feel like this is something generational. Like parents can read it to their kids and, and yeah. like you said, teach them about history in in a very personal way. Yeah. from people who lived in that moment and you know were able to experience things in a lot of in a ways that a lot of people weren't able to and i'm proud of the young youth today uh native american uh, children and stuff they're coming out you know they're, they're speaking up and they're they're protesting against uh, the oil the companies and mm -hmm. stuff it, it's very enlightening very very i mean positive and i love it you know that they're coming out well, thanks to people like you that that taught um, that taught from such a young age or such a for such a long time to be courageous and to you know not just be part of other bands and be in the background for all those years, but to step out with your own story. Um, it takes a lot of courage. It's it's why it's so humbling to talk to you today. And thank you. Thank you. We're so happy that you're here, and we really uh, I really wish that we could be somewhere where I could hear you sing, especially after you. Um, yeah. We have promised. Yeah, know, it's a promise. Yes, in the beginning they said, uh, uh, you know, you got to be careful because the FBI is following you and uh, it could be dangerous out there. And I said, damn the torpedoes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's just like the FBI following a band. It's just crazy. So I love that. I love that. I love that kind of spunk. I've always had uh, a soft spot in my heart for um, the rebellious kind that's kind of like, oh, whatever, whatever people say, we don't care, we're doing it anyway. I love that. And, mm -hmm. and I'm also like, I'm also like a daddy's girl. So I love that you guys are working on this so closely together. Mm -hmm. I think 
when you have a great dad, you should tell everybody. So. <laughs> oh, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a daddy's girl too. <laughs> I love him so much. He's like my best friend. So we have, I some, love it. he's like a 19 year old at heart, which is, <laughs> is we will go have like late night, you know, when, when this wasn't going on, but we would have late night meals and, you know, That's right. go listen to live music. It, it's great. You know, he, he's still very much lively and, and, and with it so to speak. So yeah, it's, it's been great. I can dance too. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I, um, uh, what was I going to say? I, um, I think that when you're a musician, it keeps you young at heart. And I think this is so great. I think it's a new moment for your band. I think it's going to, because of social media and YouTube, this yeah. is just going to be a really wonderful way to reintroduce you to a new audience. And so we're much. thrilled that you were able to come today. Yeah, yeah we're so you. happy to be here. Thank you I so much. I love you already. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Um, we thank you for getting up so early. We know you're in LA, so you guys are troopers, and um, we really wish you the best of luck with this book. We will do everything we can to promote thank it. You. Thank you. And, uh, I'm coming to a concert. <laughs> yes, you are more than welcome to come we'd love to you know, to touch you. base with you and have you out at any shows that are going on and we're really excited to be yeah. here with you guys and we really thank you for sharing the story with everybody yeah. we can't wait for it to get out thank yeah. you honestly thank you so much it was an honor to meet both of you and um have a great day and thank you take care <laughs> we'll get through this <laughs> yes talk soon bye bye